my speechwriter is never happy when I ditch my prepared <laughs> remarks. Uh, but, um, Your Eminence, uh, Ambassador, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear George, first of all, thank you so much. Thank you for your kind introduction. Thank you for everyone, uh, everyone for making this uh, uh, event uh, a reality. I am truly honored uh, by your presence, uh, by your warm greeting, and by your very kind words. Uh, indeed, my visit uh, uh, to uh, New York uh, comes only a few months after what uh, has proven to be an extremely successful uh, visit uh, to Washington, D.C. And I would just like to, to take the time uh, to thank uh, all of you, um, especially some of you who worked extremely hard to make uh, this visit and this speech a reality. It was not obvious when uh, we started uh, uh, planning it and discussing it uh, with our excellent uh, ambassador, uh, Alexandra Papagopoulou. Please give her a round of applause. She truly deserves it. But we finally made it happen, and it was indeed a tremendous uh, honor for me to address uh, uh, the joint session of Congress uh, and to speak uh, about uh, the profound ties that connect our two countries this parallel story of uh, democracy, uh, of a democracy that was founded here in the U.S., uh, inspired uh, by classical Greece, a Greek revolution which in turn was inspired by what happened here four decades before uh, the revolution broke out uh, in Greece. And ever since, uh, United States and Greece have been on a parallel path, uh, always on the right side uh, of history fighting uh, for the same uh, values that uh, are challenged uh, in today's uh, extremely uh, turbulent uh, world. Uh, of course, it was also an opportunity for me uh, to highlight uh, the tremendous story of Shared uh, me, you know, coming over uh, from Evia, self-made uh, man like so many uh, of you, like so many of those who made this perilous journey across the uh, Atlantic to establish uh, a new home uh, uh, here in the United States uh, resonates. Uh, and I'm so happy uh, to see uh, the Greek-American community engaged uh, in affairs back in the country. And I think one of the reasons why this is happening is because Greece indeed is doing quite well uh, over the past uh, years. And it is also always easier for Greek Americans to engage with the home country uh, when Greece is doing well uh, rather than struggling. But I think the uh, speech uh, uh, in the US Congress was, was important because it came uh, at a time when, again, we face uh, a challenge uh, to those values we all hold so dear to our Heart. And I'm again here uh, at the United uh, Nations General Assembly. I'll be able to uh, address the Assembly uh, on Friday uh, at a time when, again, uh, Europe is, is plunged uh, into war. What was unthinkable uh, a year ago has actually happened. Uh, and uh, we are again faced with a situation where we have to fight to defend the very values that constitute our democratic states. And I think that uh, the American president, President Biden, is right uh, to frame um, today's division of the world as a fight between democracies on the one hand and autocracies uh, on the other hand. And uh, it didn't take uh, as much time um, to make up our decision to support uh, Ukraine uh, materially uh, and to side with all those countries who understood that what is at stake uh, in Ukraine goes uh, beyond um, the sovereignty uh, of a country which is uh, invader by uh, a larger uh, aggressive uh, power. Uh, what's at stake uh, is uh, the preservation uh, of a rules-based uh, international order. And of course, this is something that should be of great concern to us. It should be a concern to us Greeks. It should be a uh, concern to uh, our brothers in Cyprus. I would like to welcome Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister Kasulidis, from the Cypriot <laughs> Republic of Cyprus. 
because we shouldn't forget that the wound of Cyprus is still, is still open um, and that an invasion did take place in Cyprus 48 years ago uh, and that uh, the problem of the unification of the island unfortunately has not yet been resolved. Uh, and of course it is uh, uh, so important uh, for President Putin to be defeated in Ukraine not only for the sake of Ukraine but in order to send uh, a signal to all authoritarian leaders that uh, borders cannot be redrawn through force, that uh, uh, historical revisionism uh, will not be rewarded, and that there is only one way to solve disputes in today's world, and that is adherence to international law uh, and the ability of civilized states to sit down, discuss, and resolve their differences peacefully. Uh, I know you probably expect me to, um, uh, to speak uh, uh, at length uh, uh, about uh, uh, our current state of relationship with Turkey. I will refrain uh, from doing that. I will spend some time on this uh, uh, issue when I address the United Nations uh, General Assembly. Uh, I will only uh, say one word on this uh, topic. Uh, Greece uh, is not going to be bullied by our aggressive neighbors. And the challenges to the sovereignty uh, of Greece are uh, simply uh, unacceptable uh, and uh, we will do uh, whatever uh, it takes to strengthen our alliances. Our alliance with the United States is at an all-time high. Uh, to communicate uh, the message of what is really happening today in the Eastern Mediterranean and to make the case that at a time when the West is fighting essentially uh, a war uh, in uh, Ukraine uh, against uh, an aggressive Russia, uh, the last thing that we need is another source of geopolitical instability um, at the southeastern flank of NATO. As I've uh, uh, said uh, many times, uh, uh, we are faced uh, with uh, uh, a very, very challenging period ahead of us. Uh, Russia has weaponized natural gas, has driven up the prices uh, tenfold, uh, and has put a lot of pressure on all European economies in its uh, attempt uh, to break the European resolve in our support for Ukraine. Russia will not succeed in its efforts, and it will not uh, succeed because we will do whatever it takes to make sure that uh, we support our citizens uh, and our businesses uh, during this difficult uh, winter. Uh, we will support them financially. We will put in place uh, schemes through which we recycle the windfall, uh, windfall profits uh, of the large energy producers, uh, place them in special funds in order to support uh, businesses uh, and households uh, and reduce the exorbitant uh, uh, price uh, of electricity and gas. And it is important uh, that we do so and that we do so at the European level because we need to keep the cohesion of our democracies, of our democracies and of our societies uh, intact. Uh, we need this in order to make sure uh, that uh, the resolve uh, of our effort will not waver. Uh, and uh, as Greek Prime Minister, uh, I can assure you, as I have assured also the Greek people, that we'll do whatever we can within the constraints of our budget uh, to make sure that we support businesses and households during this uh, very, very difficult winter. And we will continue to push the European Union to do more, to come up with a more constructive uh, European response to what is essentially a, a European geopolitical crisis. But what I can tell you is that uh, every crisis also uh, presents uh, new opportunities. When we came into power uh, in uh, July 2019, we did not envision uh, at the time that we would have to deal with a very aggressive neighbor, with a weaponization uh, of migration, with a pandemic, uh, with a war in Ukraine, uh, with a spike uh, in prices, the likes of which we have not seen uh, in more than 40 years. I think we've uh, managed uh, to steer the ship safely uh, through these uh, very, very choppy 
waters. And Greece today is in a better position than it was three years ago. Our economy is doing much better. We expect uh, a GDP growth for 2022 uh, of 5.3%, which will be way above the average for the European uh, Union. Uh, we expect uh, to avoid a recession next year. Uh, we attract uh, record foreign direct investment uh, into the country. For those of you who have visited Greece during the summer, you know we've had an excellent tourism season, which is uh, continuing, uh, thank God, as we try to extend uh, our tourism season. And we have driven uh, through, in spite of the difficulties and the focus on day-to-day -day crisis management, very, very important reforms uh, uh, on uh, um, numerous uh, uh, important public policy uh, files. Just let me give you one example, what we're doing with education. Uh, I'm so happy that we've passed uh, a very important milestone bill, uh, liberalizing essentially um, higher public education, allowing our universities to form more collaborations with, with foreign uh, institutions, uh, pushing through the sorts of innovations that you would expect to find in all top American universities. And in November, we'll be welcoming 30 top American universities to Greece in order to forge more partnerships with our big public uh, um, uh, universities. And similar reforms have taken uh, place uh, in many, many different uh, fields. Uh, uh, three uh, years ago, if you had uh, to deal with the state, you were forced to stand uh, uh, in a queue and battle you know, daily um, the Greek bureaucracy. Now, for those of you uh, who have been in Greece, you know that many of the things that you needed a physical presence in the past you can do through your mobile phone through the gov.gr application and at a time when in the US uh, you still have a little handwritten vaccination card uh, in Greece we pioneered the digital certificate and we were ahead of Europe in terms of driving through these types uh, of, digital, uh, of digital reforms and, and of course uh, the big investors have taken notice uh, they've taken notice of the fact that things are indeed changing uh, in Greece, that this is a great, great place to uh, invest, uh, not just in traditional sectors such as tourism, but also in new innovative sectors such as tech. And it's a great place to uh, invest not only because I think it has a qualified, a good government uh, that is uh, reducing regulatory burden and taxation. It's a great place to invest because it has tremendous human capital. The main reason why investors come to Greece and set up shop uh, in Greece is the incredibly talented pool of young, highly educated Greeks who deserve uh, a better future and who are looking for these types of jobs to convince them not to leave the country and stay and build their professional future and raise their families in Greece. And probably. <laughs> Probably the most encouraging thing that has happened uh, in Greece over the past years, the one thing that makes me happy and, and proud, is when I talk to young Greeks who left the country during the very difficult years of the crisis. I'm referring to what we call in Greece the brain drain uh, uh, generation. Uh, and they're actually beginning to come back. They're beginning to come back because they know they can get better jobs. But they're beginning to come back also because I think they believe uh, in the long-term prospect of the country. And this is incredibly uh, encouraging. It makes us work every day uh, even harder uh, to complete um, this, uh, this project, which, uh, in spite of all the big changes that we've made, is half finished. And that is why uh, the next elections are also particularly important. Uh, from a political point of view, because there the choice is also uh, very clear. It's a choice between staying the course, continuing the important changes uh, that we have uh, uh, implemented, uh, drive through uh, reforms, continue uh, on the path uh, of a foreign policy that builds upon uh, our strong uh, regional uh, alliances. Let me welcome uh, David Harris, who's an excellent friend uh, uh, of Greece on, uh, on behalf of the AJC, and congratulate you on the terrific job you, uh, you've done and on the important contribution in further strengthening the relationship between the U.S., uh, Greece, and, uh, and Israel. So, I mean, the one path is, is very clear. 
uh, but there's always uh, a risk. There's always uh, a risk that uh, uh, we could revert back to our bad uh, uh, habits and undo all the progress uh, that, uh, that we have made. I don't want to make this uh, a political uh, discourse or a political debate, uh, but we will be having elections uh, in, in uh, 2023. And I think that the dilemma um, uh, um, that the Greek people will face is going to be uh, very, very clear. I have confidence uh, that uh, we will be able to continue uh, the work that uh, we, uh, we have started. Again, as I told you, uh, the project of reforming um, Greece bottom-up, not just top-down, uh, has only started. And it will need uh, time uh, to be um, fully completed. But at the end of this path, because we have a very clear vision about what Greece should look like in, uh, in 2030, is a completely different country. You know, a prosperous country, uh, a country that has reduced uh, income um, uh, inequality, that is able to punch above its weight uh, in Europe uh, and in the region, uh, a country that is able to leverage its tremendous comparative uh, advantages, not just its talented people, but also its, its natural beauty, its, uh, its cultural um, uh, heritage, a, a prosperous, uh, and just a country that will bear no resemblance uh, to the country of the financial crisis uh, of uh, the second uh, decade uh, of the 21st century. So uh, allow me to conclude by allowing us to think big. I mean, uh, I think the sky is the limit uh, when we think in terms of the potential that this country really has. And of course, in order to uh, fully materialize uh, this uh, potential, we need your help, we need the support of the incredibly uh, talented, uh, uh, prosperous, and dynamic uh, Greek-American community. And I know that you care a lot about what's uh, happening back home. And it gives me a tremendous joy when you feel proud about what Greece is able to achieve during these difficult times. Thank you very much for your attention. And thank you. Thank you for the support you're offering to our homeland. Thank you so much.